Okay. Later. Hey, bro, welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted Podcast. It's going to be a great show today. Uh, we got TJ Laramie, uh, just won his fight to get on the Contender Series. Uh, we got, uh, we got, we got, a, we got a great show. We have a, a comic, Josh Johnson, who um, is a writer for The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Um, and he's a funny guy. I actually, uh, you know, a lot of the times with comics, you're like, ah, uh, but this dude is hilarious. Uh, not that I'm like, ah, uh, but it's just, I don't, as a comic, I'm a little jaded towards other comics. Not jaded, but I just like, it takes a lot to make me laugh. Yeah. Because I could also see where the person's coming from and see what's going on. And I've heard like a billions of jokes. But this dude, this dude's funny. Uh, really funny. So I'm excited to talk to him. Uh, we cool. got Jake Ellenberger. You um, talking about me already? Who is one of the best ever. Uh, one of my favorite comics. And we have Kai, <laughs> Kai Boy. Kai, Kai Boy, who is awesome. Uh, just won his fight. Got into the UFC from Hawaii. Uh, badass fighter. Also a wrestler in college. State champ of Hawaii. Uh, his dad's a martial artist. His brother plays, I think, wide receiver uh, for University of Hawaii. Dude, just fucking born legacy. Uh, but let's talk about Jake Ellenberger and his weird mustache. Uh, Jake, it just keeps getting weird. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's going on? Uh, is there, it feels like it's like Survivor Jake's face. And your mustache just keeps like getting voted off your face. I mean, it's either, it's either shave it or let it go. You know what I mean? You got you got to shave it. I I, I, All no, right. I like it. Fuck it. It's different. I like. I think it looks badass. It looks like you've been in like a battle or something. You survived like a battle axe to the face. You know, a battle with a what? A Mach three. Uh, so. <laughs> it's actually a, a bear claw. I got I got one of the. You know. I like it. I yeah, that's what it looks like. I like it. Uh, we we got a lot of news uh, in the last couple of days. Actually, since Monday. First of all, Anthony Johnson has entered the USADA pool again uh, at 205, which this dude has been in more weight classes than the Kardashian sisters, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> oh, I mean, just oh, like he started off at 170. Like he had never actually made it, but that was his first weight. Was what? Yeah, I mean, he fought Koscheck at 170 and 170. Then he balloons up to like we kept missing it. Then in 205. Then at one point he was like. I think he was like 310, all muscle, like bodybuilder. This is a couple, like a, six months ago. And now he's going to be 205. He's a dangerous man, though. I mean, a Anthony Johnson, I feel like when he's mentally there, when he's not – I know his last fight against DC didn't go very well, but I think his, his, his trainer left or something happened with him and Henry Hooft. And they, it was just one of those weird situations yeah. where the Black Zillions disbanded and it was just – all kinds of turmoil. And I think he looks at his trainer as like a, a father figure. And it was, it, it was a mess. Right. But when Anthony Johnson's on his game, the dude, like look what he did to Phil Davis. I mean, he is a Ryan Bader. Look how good. Ba I mean, he's just knocking people the fuck out. He's yeah. a monster when he's there. Jake. No, for sure. I mean, it's funny when you, <laughs> you're saying about his weight, I, I, I sat next to him at a UFC, uh, Probably like six or eight months ago, but yeah, he was he was big. He looked he looked big. I was like, God damn, he's a but not even like fat big. Just like, no, I know, no, no, like oh. lean. But he looked big. I was like, God damn, this dude can lift a house. Like I really thought that he was the worst matchup for John Jones for a while before the DC fights. I know, and even the first DC fight, I think he almost had him out quickly. He hit him once. DC didn't know where he was. Oh yeah, yeah, um, I remember that fight. <laughs> But I, I thought that this dude could match up well against John Jones because he doesn't have amazing wrestling. He's a college wrestler, but he's got great defense. He's hard to take down. Yeah. Johnson, sure. Unless you're at Daniel Cormier. He hits so hard. His stamina could be a problem sometimes. Like, it seems like he could gas a little bit. But mentally is what his issue is. Either he shows up or he doesn't. But yeah. when he does, wow. Oh, yeah. Um, scary. He's a but problem. He's a guy, too, like – I mean, it's it's kind of like where you, like you're talking about where you're at, if you're in a good mental space, you know, where you're comfortable. You see guys even go up in weight class and sometimes do better because they don't have all that extra stress, that mm -hmm. weight cutting stress, you know, just, I mean, he's a, obviously as you get older, it's like, you know, you're, you're getting older and tablet slowing down, that kind of thing. It's like if, if he's comfortable and, he, and, and he's I mean, in a good head space. He's I mean, harder than O'Malley's bong. I mean, he hits <laughs> – he hits people so hard that Joe Biden remembers where he is. Like that, that's how hard he hits people. That's I'm pretty excited. hard, dude. But I'm, I'm excited for Anthony Johnson because he's almost never in – have you ever seen a, a, a boring fight that Anthony Johnson was in? 
Never. No, right? no, no, no. I mean, has he ever – he's never been in a boring fight. Ever. Yeah. I thought he was going to be in bare knuckle boxing. It's so strange for the past like fifty bare knuckle boxing events. He's like been like some like figure there. Like he's like standing in the back. It's like there's like this big anticipation like that he was going to fight in BKFC, and it just never happened. Yeah, I think that something was weird about that. I and mean, then they were trying to like lure him in, uh-huh. and uh, I think he was like, you know what? I, I mean, he would have killed somebody, or he would have broken his hands in the first yeah. eight, yeah. eight seconds. And, uh, it's probably a matter of like terms and pay if they're gonna pay him what he wanted i don't know but yeah but anyway, he's, come back to, he's come back to the ufc is what you're saying he signed with he's back in the usada testing pool okay uh at 205 he coming back so he's slimmed down i don't see how you i mean look i even talked to chuck liddell over the weekend about mike tyson and i was like how does tyson i wouldn't want to hear he look like precious right and now <laughs> the guy looks like how does he do that and he, he was like chuck liddell was explaining to me that when you're that type of athlete and like he is, you can get in shape really fast. Yeah. You don't need any performance enhancing drugs or steroids. (laughs) No, but he said that like, even Chuck, he said he loses 20 pounds. He's ripped again. He's shredded. Um, And I guess with Tyson, the same way, I guess certain people could just, could just do that. Huh? (laughs) Well, not me. I mean, there's some guys with, yeah, like freak metabolism. And then when they start training or getting a, you know, getting into a good routine, which, you know, Mike's been working out for a while. You've seen him, his workout videos and training and stuff like that. But, again, I, I have no idea. I mean, I'm not going to make any accusations or assumptions, but the guy looks okay. good. Well, answer me this, right? Because your old coach was Cordero, right? Yeah. So he's training with Cordero for a boxing match with uh, Roy Jones Jr. Now, Cordero is mostly uh, – is he a boxing instructor? Is he a kickboxing instructor? What is Cordero primarily? Yeah, he's, he's – uh, traditional Muay Thai and kickboxing. Mm-hmm. So why is he, why would he pick him to train him? I don't know, to be honest. I think he, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, he, I think it's more of let's, you know, let's get in shape. Let's, let's get a routine going. And I don't know, but as far as like, you think maybe the Brazilian supplements, like he has a link to people that have Brazilian. No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Fine. All right. So uh, now John Jones retired. At 205, he's relinquishing his belt. He didn't say he's not going to heavyweight. He says, I'm retired. I'm focusing on my true love, cocaine. Um, So he's (laughs) he's retiring at 205. Now, so what does that mean? I I think they're trying to make Steve Bay versus John Jones. That's what I heard. I heard that Dana White gave John Jones an ultimatum where he could either do a rematch with Dominic Reyes at 205 or – go up to heavyweight and fight for the title against Stipe Miocic, which I think is what everybody wants. I don't really want to see John Jones just stick around. I'd like to see the Dominic Reyes rematch, of course, because I think Reyes won that fight. But, like, if he, if he beats Reyes again, it's like, what the hell are you going to do? You beat literally every 205-pound human being on the planet. You got to go to heavyweight, you know? And who knows how many well, fights he has left, too. And let, let's keep it real. Like, at the end of the day, it comes down to paper you draw. Are, are you selling pay-per-views? And, I mean, let's – I, I, there's a lot more compelling fights at heavyweight than yeah. you know, a, a steep a or you know fill in the blank versus dc or versus uh, john jones at heavyweight is it could be a much bigger pay- you know no disrespect to like a reyes or that's not as big not of a fight a bit, yeah, so, yeah. i mean how long are you gonna fight let's make the most of let's make the let's most talk of about this game. because i don't know who wins the steep a john jones fight at one point i was thought that jones was a terrible matchup for steep a as far as like jones is going to be steep a but jones has not been looking like the john jones that was walking through everybody as of late i mean he he people thought he lost his last fight the fight before it the guy didn't the guy tear his acl or something and still but oh, tiago uh, santos yeah Santos kind of like went the first round it. yeah it wasn't acl but it was some kind of a weird injury like, right yeah with his knee so this is a different this is not the john jones that was destroying everybody and and even doing those crazy things now he's winning he's a winner he's he's a winner but steve a miocic john jones is a very interesting fight i don't even know who i pick in this fight that's why i want to see it isn't that why you want to see these fights but let's break it down right so we're gonna go striking i guess john jones is a better striker if you took with kicks but boxing, yeah. I would say Stipe. He was a Golden Gloves champion. Um, wrestling, you got to go to John Jones, although Stipe was a college wrestler. Yeah. 
I'm, I mean, me personally, I, I'm actually leaning towards Stipe in this fight because it's like time, time out is never a good thing. You know, just let's, let's talk about when momentum is a real thing. And I mean, Stipe, he keeps getting, he's, he's put in the spotlight in these big fights, these massive fights, and he keeps winning. And I mean, he looked good against uh, DC, which DC is a, you know, that's, that's a tough matchup for anybody, even, you know, even, even Jones, you know, he's had some, some big fights, but uh, I'm leaning towards Stipe at heavyweight, man. I really am. I think there's something to be said about momentum. But like, where do you, let's, uh, let's go. I, I know this is, it's weird to do that, but like, where do you rank? Okay. So we rank striking. Do we all agree that Jones has a favor or we do the Stipe? Jones. Jones. Cause he has that unconventional striking that kind of yeah. flies. Overall striking. Yeah. But boxing. Yeah. Stipe. So we're going to go grappling. I mean, he, he's only a blue belt, John Jones, but he submits everybody. I mean, when he does these jujitsu competitions, I don't think he's ever lost. Uh, are we going John Jones or Stipe in grappling? I go Stipe in grappling. In jujitsu? Yeah. In wrestling? I think they, I don't think I don't think John Jones is gonna try to take this fight to the ground. I mean, if Stipe can go in there and have three fights with Daniel Cormier, who's like the best wrestler in MMA, I think you know Stipe has his good yeah, but, but, good but, enough but we credentials. Look, when we look at John Jones knocked out DC which I guess Stipe did too uh, the second time. And he also, uh, I mean, man, this is a tough one because it's, it's like, tough. so we go wrestling, MMA wrestling. I guess we go John Jones in MMA wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, John Jones has vicious, vicious ground and pound too. And I don't know. I don't remember the last time we saw Stipe do crazy ground and pound. I think well, was it was like, Alistair. It's like, it's like DC. It's like, yeah, he's got great wrestling when he chooses to use it. Isn't right. He use it? Uh, we go time served. That's that's John Jones, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah no, this is, I, it's gonna be it's good. I love it when I can't pick a fight. That's my favorite thing, because that's when I'm like, that's when you want to see a fight. That's why we make these fights. So um, I, I still I would still like to see John Jones at heavyweight though. I think that that is more interesting to me. I'll watch I'll watch him at heavyweight two hundred five. Uh, you know, it's all right. It's, it's not as compelling. So they made uh, the Black Beast versus Curtis Blades. I love it. Uh, I get I got Blades all day. Yeah, the yeah. wrestling. I, Black Beast is just. I'm with you. I it's it's weird. I've had so many fights where I'm like, all right, this is the guy. Like he's you know Black Beast is toast. You know what I mean? And he finds a way to win. There literally, it's like, you, it, it's hard to just talk about skills because it's like he's not the Beast is not the most skilled guy, but. Man, the guy, he can explode. He, he keeps getting better. He's been fighting more. He gets better, loses a little bit of weight, gets a little bit quicker. But, man, every time I bet against him, he wins. So I know. He's, he is a very – he's one of those dudes. Like, he's exactly. Um, kind of like that with me. Like, Ben Rothwell is like that for me. Uh, like, yeah. Rothwell wins fights, and I'm like, he's not going to win this fight. Even like Josh Barnett. He's not going to beat Josh Barnett. And then he right. makes him tap to a titty choke. I mean, literally, I've never seen a guy mush his tits together and, and, and <laughs> fucking Barnett to tap. And Barnett does awesome. have what? I mean, he does have a mean five finger guillotine. Like he, I, you know, he's been doing it forever. But that's yeah, that was a a very odd joke. But he's it, it was, that. It, it, literally, like I've like I've had women try to do it to me during during bed. Now here's this thing. So uh, enough with the tweets with the you on the screen. It was funny at first. It was cool at first. Now they're getting ridiculous about it. Okay, one thing if it's like the champ. The, the, the guy he's fighting, like, calls him out, like, I want you next or something. They had Paris Hilton last yeah. week in the main event, right? UFC fights, yay! I'm like, 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 is anybody going, where does Paris Hilton think of this fight right now? I mean, at that point, might as well just pull up, like, Kanye West's rants about the president or something that have nothing to do with anything. Or just put some, some fucking, some porn star up who's like, who want to see my tits? Fucking go fight, like give me tokens or something or join my only fans like, uh, what are we doing here like, the only time i like that though is when it's other fighters giving their like scores for each round yeah. that's the only time i really like it but it's always even that sometimes it's like other fighters teammates so the yeah, guy who's fighting true. always has his teammate winning for some odd some odd reason that is so, true so, so, i don't hey. I mean, do we hey. do we care what little pump thinks during the fights <laughs> oh, but adam you gotta understand that the majority owner of the UFC is a talent agency called WME. So they're, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're throwing their stars and, and, you know, trying to create more buzz, you know? 
but they might as well just put like some put some porn star with, like Mary, you know some i don't know uh alexis texas like just fingered myself and have don't even put the ufc just i mean at least that's i'd be like oh well, uh, alexis thing i mean that at least is you know i just think it's annoying plus they never put my fucking tweets up there i know I got 78, dude. followers they got these guys with like eight, 80 followers i'm like i mean i grant you they can't put most of it because yeah. it's ridiculous but some of them you can I was anyway. listening to uh, MMA Fighting's podcast, and they were talking about your tweets. They were talking about your one, um, uh, who is it, who lost, who's going to lose and then go fight for a heavyweight title, uh, Chris Weidman. Yeah, He's yeah, one yeah. loss away from a Bellator yeah, title shot. I got 5,000 likes. Yeah, okay. dude. I, the other one got, like, literally, the one with Cejudo got 5,000 likes, uh, where I, I said that uh, Cody No Love uh, abstains from sex before his fights, which explains why Cejudo's so good, right? And, <laughs> They don't put my fucking tweets up there, but they put like, uh, you know, Jim from fucking Jim from Fresno goes up there. Anyway, yeah. so, all right. So it also got announced uh, that Brian Ortega versus the Korean Zombie in October. This, oh, yeah. I look Brian Ortega. One time, I was like, uh, I was walking to a, <laughs> to the fight, and I saw Ortega, and I was like, oh, it's Ortega. And then I almost bumped into somebody, and they kind of like smushed me, kind of. And he started laughing, and I felt like that fucking nerd in high school that got like a wedgie in front of everybody. So I'm not the biggest fan, but no. <laughs> but that was annoying. But the, I don't know how good Brian Ortega is. Because at one point, he looked like he was a world beater. And then Max Holloway beat him. But Max Holloway is awesome. But we haven't seen this guy in two years. And he wanted to fight the Korean Zombies translator, who's a rapper. Uh, <laughs> at a fight or something like what's going on i i see him in commercials every day i know he used to be in gangs until he found Modelo or something but like <laughs> what do we think about this fight jake it's interesting no i like it i think uh you know it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good test it's gonna be a good test for, you know that's not an easy fight for either guy i think uh, or, or take one of those guys too he can he can uh he can fight man he's obviously incredible on the ground and i think he keeps getting better um but no, it's it's. I mean, that's a main event fight. You know what I mean? I think both guys, both guys are impressive. Um, I'm actually I'm leaning towards Ortega. Have you ever trained with Ortega? Yeah, I've trained with him quite a bit. How how uh, how uh, good is he? He's good. He's very. Uh, I think he's under he's underrated in a lot of ways. But you know, again, when you're facing you when you're facing the top guys in the world, it's you know like like Holloway. I mean, shit. Holloway makes a lot of people look bad. But I'm saying, okay, yeah, of course. But like, like when you train with like Benil Dariush, I remember that you were so high on him. You were like, this dude is gonna be the next big thing, right? And it may, you may be right. I mean, he's knocking now. He's fucking Dariush Tyson. He's like K1 Benil, right? <laughs> um, I remember when you trained with Pat Cummings. You were like Pat Cummings. You said he might have had a shot to beat Cormier at that time. You were like, I don't know, man. This dude is really good, Pat Cummings. Um, did Ortega give you that same sense of this is going to be a world champion one day or a future world champion? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, again, there's a lot of things you can kind of like take out of training. Um, but at the same token, it's like, there's a lot of guys who are incredible in the, I used to have guys when I trained in Nebraska that were like, uh, incredible in the gym, like, like amazing fighter. You know, you think they're like, the best guy I've ever trained with, and then you, they 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 can't put it together, you know. Right. Right. So, but no, Ortega's clearly been one of those guys. Like even early in his career, it was kind of like he's good, but we're not sure how good he is. And he kept finding what you know, Frankie. Yeah, he kept finding ways to win, and so that you know, he he definitely has the the mentality to be a champion. So, uh, but you have some amazing insight, man. Like I mean, I could see why you do really well gambling because you talk like when they announced that. Uh, Johnny Hendricks was going to fight Dakota Cochran in bare knuckle boxing. I'm like, Dakota's going to get killed. Johnny Hendricks has got hands of fucking guy almost knocked out GSP. He knocked out this guy. He knocked out that guy. And this, what's his name? Dakota Cochran beat him, like, like stopped him in like yeah. two rounds. Yeah. And you told me that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. How did you know that? Man, it's, well, I, I trained with him quite a bit and it's, one of those things is some some guys have those intangibles. I mean, he's like a power lifter when he's not training. Like Dakota Cochran's strong as hell, and he's really he's really good everywhere. Like even training MMA with him, like he's not. There's not one place where you're like, oh, he's not good here. He's good everywhere. But 
Um, but anyway, he yeah, he hits so freaking hard. I was like, I'm, I'm, if if he connects, he's gonna put more. Crazy, on. I, I'm like Jake's. I think I'm like Jake's. Obviously, lost his mind. Uh, Dakota Cochran is gonna get killed by Johnny Hendricks, and I was like, I was blown away. Uh, shout out to Dakota, by the way. Um, speaking of bare knuckle boxing, so Paige Van Zant is officially signed with bare knuckle boxing. I don't know what she's thinking. Um, she's a beautiful girl. She's obviously a good fighter. She can make a lot of money in Bellator. She's, I don't know what, I mean, she must love to fight. And that's, but it just seems like, I, I don't get it. It's a multi-million but, dollar fight deal. Is that what she's that's why about? that's why she signed i'm gonna i'll go into the heavyweight division of bare knuckle boxing right now for ten thousand dollars she I'll got a multi-million dollar you know that for a fact a multi yeah they have multi-million who's backing bare knuckle boxing uh fucking bill gates like how does <laughs> like i mean i don't know anybody that ever orders these pay-per-views <laughs> like it's like they usually stream it free on youtube or facebook i i mean i think it's like ten dollars when i do buy it like, i know multi-million dollar the page yeah. back it yeah. is. I mean, it, it's a it's a big risk. It's a big risk on the promotion standpoint. But I think if if that can lead to a lot more pay per views or generate sales, I mean, we'll see. But is anybody? Is it, I mean, people want to see her get hurt. Like, are people watching this to see her get her face fucked up? Like, uh, no yeah. one. Like Anthony Johnson, if he went on bare knuckle boxing, you'd be like, oh, he he's gonna murder somebody. Or yeah. Mike Tyson when he boxes, you're like, oh, somebody's getting knocked out. Like nobody's if people tuning into Paige Van Zant to watch her get fucking her face fucked up like oh, she's gonna bring a lot of she's gonna bring a lot of eyes though to to to, to when she fights i, I mean who's <laughs> i mean she's not really a knockout artist like her her knockouts are usually by kicks if she does or she stops people with ground and pound like like what are people just want to see a hot girl get the shit beaten out of her is that hell yeah dude. isn't there better ways to spend i i like Paige van zandt and i i i love her husband great fucking dude he comes on the show all the time austin yeah they're yes. both really nice people awesome yeah people. um maybe she just wants to prove that she's a badass but i think she's already proved it no like, yeah I, I don't think it's an ego move i think it's strategically a it's a it's a it's a money move let's be honest let's call it what it is you know what i mean so are we, are we are, i mean are people thinking that like scars are gonna heal on her face like I mean, Adam hindsight's twenty twenty. You know what I mean? We'll see. <laughs> I mean, she's fighting Betch Cahaya. I guess her first fight. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard. Wait, Betch is in the BKFC yeah. too. Yeah, I heard, yeah, I heard they signed Betch as well. Seriously? That's what I heard. That's the okay. word on the street. That's the word on the street. Is that even the same weight? I don't even. Uh, but what is Betch one thirty five and she's twenty five? I don't know. Look, I'm a fan of Paige Van Zandt. I just don't know what. My, my first instinct is what the fuck is she thinking? But I guess a million dollar deal. She loves to fight. She wants to hit somebody in the face. I know. I've heard some rumors too, as far as like the backing for, for bare knuckle. I've heard there's some big, um, some of, some of the backers have made a lot of money in like, well, either. So I don't know. So, something the mafia. I, I don't know. Something like, uh, the porn industry or something where they've made a lot of money. So it's oh. like, Speaking of which, by the way, uh, speaking of another awesome uh, event uh, on the, so there's a new event. It just got announced. It's going to be on uh, Cam Soda, which is a porn site. That's why I think about that. So uh, have you heard about uh, Cam Soda, uh, Jake? No. It's All right. A- Cam Soda, it's a, it's, a, it's a porn site. I've never actually paid money into it, but it was the one. They had one fight recently. I think they had a. Uh, What's his name? Fought in it. Um, Mike Perry's friend, the, the, the guy was in uh, PFL. Wh- who am I thinking of? Uh, you know I'm talking about. The guy who got busted for great guy, huge guy, oh, Wean Dog. I just, I'm, oh, I just went to Cam Soda right now, so my mind is completely blank <laughs> of because ah! of what I'm seeing. <laughs> all right, so this is a porn website. I can confirm that it is a porn website. All right, so Cam Soda, a leading adult entertainment webcam, announced it's re-entering the combat sports world. They had one fight. Uh, oh, Alex Nicholson won in the uh, fight. Uh, he, he beat Rico Rodriguez in the last event. Rico Rodriguez, uh, obviously, okay. in, his, in his prime. Okay, so <laughs> it's Fight Circus. The fights you've always wanted to see. August 22nd in Thailand. The card includes matchups opening uh, an open weight MMA bout between a super heavyweight and a middleweight. Two inexperienced brothers against one ex- experienced fighter. All right, so Jake, that's you and your brother could fight in that. Um, the two best friends against the MMA fighter, two bare knuckle fights with headbutts, 
one a woman's fight and another a men's fight and a bantamweight Muay Thai coach against a heavyweight boxer in a boxing match. Uh, it's all going to fightcircus.com. Donations will be collected. It goes to COVID relief and probably mental health for anyone who wants <laughs> uh, so, and, and, and the main event's going to be former WBC super heavyweight world champion Stephen Banks against 300-pound Australian Sam Cassidy. This is called Fight Circus. Uh, are you excited about this, Jake? I can't wait. <laughs> you don't want to see two brothers uh, fight a fighter. And uh, I, Ween Dog, are we going to have to cover this? Oh, dude. I love watching videos where people are on the brink of death and especially when it's, you know, it's legal. I'm pretty sure this is all legal, right? Yeah, this is yeah, a different well, country, it's in, Thailand. It's in, it's in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, so I like all this crazy, very um, unethical, unhumane shit. So I'm excited for it. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, Jake left. That's how bad. Shang, where were you? It's fucking noon. You said 1230. No, I did not. Look at the text. You ready? You Hold sure? On. Yeah, uh, hold on, let me see. No, I, uh, yeah, I thought it was 12.32. Hey, brother, because want to do the podcast Wednesday at noon, Saturday, 7.07. You ready? Yeah. You sure? Are you sure? You sure with that? No, I said tomorrow we have 12.30, TJ Laramie coming in at 12.30. But the podcast... We have, I, I looked at it, it said 12.30. It says here, 12.30. I know, but before that, it says noon. That was just the schedule of when people are coming on. I should have said that. Oh, there he is. That was it's my no fault. Big deal, boys. Saying, that no was, big deal. That was saying that was that was actually my fault. I should have said uh, it was at noon. I did say okay. It was my fault. I didn't make clear. You're right. Shang is here. So Shang, we're talking about uh, a couple things. Shang, what's uh, happening? What's so, up, uh, JP? So, <laughs> Good to meet you online. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, man. First of all, yeah. Shang, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm I'm, I'm very disappointed with the fights this weekend. Uh, but I was, shut up, shut your mouth, shut your fucking pie hole, brother. No, man, I was like, but I, I knew the one fight I was going to go the way it was going to go. We said every fight was going to go. We said Stipe was going to be Cormier. I think, yeah, but I just thought Stipe not using his wrestling, didn't shoot enough. Didn't, he, there was so much shit he could have done. What do you mean, Cormier, not wrestling? Cormier, not wrestling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's your strong point. And I fuck all that. If, if, if you can stand up a bang with a person, that's fine, which he could. But he knows he's a stronger wrestler, and he should have fucking used it. And he didn't use it. He tried to, his ego or whatever. I don't know what the fuck. And the eye poke was no joke. His eye was fucked. I think, I think in the second round, when he didn't know where he was, and he asked the corner, like, where am I? Uh, what happened? I think the fight was over at that point. As far as, like, you know, he took him a while to figure out where the fuck he was. Uh, Jake, have you ever been hit and you didn't know where you were? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just uh, said, or, yeah, pretty much. Uh, in training a couple times, yeah, but what about, dur yeah. what about during the fight? The last one in recent memory when I fought Masvidal, he hit me with a, I think it was a three, I don't know, a combination. A three piece of uh, soda? Yeah, he hit me a combination, and I, and, I, and I had stars for a second, and I was like, God damn, because he's, he's, he's a lot faster than, than, you, than you look. Like, he's deceptively fast, but uh, right. that was the last one I can remember in recent memory. Wow. So, I mean, now, now, obviously, that changes the fight, right? I mean, that's got to be, like, one of the worst feelings in the world is waking up and not knowing where the fuck you are, right? <laughs> yeah, you got to, yeah, you got to hit reset real quick, or hopefully there's a, there's a round, a minute between the rounds, you know? Yeah, so you can get a, get some, uh, like, get your faculties together, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, all right, another thing. Uh, now, it turned out that um, what's-his-name ankle was not broken. Um, our, our boy, uh, uh, Sugar Sean. Know. Now, some people say he should have kept fighting. His ankle was out. I mean, his knee was out. He had one leg. I, don't, I think it was actually a pretty good stoppage by Herb Dean because it was pretty obvious what was going to happen. He was just getting going to get pounded. I don't yeah. think he would have won with one with laying on the ground with one leg. People were mad at Herb Dean, but I'm like, what? come on, man. The guy I feel so bad for Herb Dean lately. I feel so bad. Every single fight he refs, he gets some shit on the internet. And most of the time, I, I side with Herb Dean. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, aside from that one fight in England, and also the, uh, I think it was the thumbs up that Uriah Faber did back in the day when he gave somebody a thumbs up and he was like, Herb stopped it anyway. I would say <laughs> for the most part, I'd be like, you got to just round those off because he's, you know, repped hundreds of thousands of thousands. And of he's, 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 he's a good rep. 
Uh, well, I think we're getting, we're getting Zoom hacks. Um, now, what, now, do you consider that, Jake, a, a loss by O'Malley? Because I thought he was winning that fight up until that point. He rolled yeah, his it, ankle. Yeah, it's weird, dude. It's one of those things, like, I mean, injuries happen. Things happen. It's, it's, it's a full contact fight. It's, it's unfortunate. I mean, that definitely, you know, will end, will end a fight. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, yeah, it, it is. You know, did he get beat up? Did he get beat? Uh, you know, that's, that's debatable. But uh, it's, you know, it's still, you know, you win, you lose. Yeah, but, uh, I guess I, you're on I saw his, I You saw his foot turn in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it turned like this, and then it kept going. I went, ah! <laughs> what the fuck? I, I've torn my – I fucked my knee up, but, you know, it was different. I, I felt it afterwards. I think because when you have a lot of adrenaline, sometimes you'll keep going. Yeah. And my knee was fucked up. And then afterwards, my knee looked like the size of Tyson's head. Like, <laughs> no, it was fucked. I was like, what? It was like, what the fuck? Did y'all yeah. put a small baby in my knee? What the fuck? Yeah. It was that bad. But during – I was like – I kept going. But then afterwards, it was like, I'll never do that shit again. This is bullshit. Dude, by the way, a friend of mine went up to Mike Tyson a couple days ago and was like, Tyson, man, you know, you're going to kill Roy Jones. Are you sure you should be doing this? And Tyson said, don't worry. He's going to be so rich. He's going to afford a really expensive wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I, Mike Tyson I, got that helter-skelter look in his eyes. He I, still like think Roy, I still think Roy Jones wins this fight. I'm sorry. I think... Tyson gasses out after two rounds, and Jones takes it. Jake? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Man, th th there's so many things with this fight. Like, with with Tyson, I mean, he's he's almost like he, he's trying to be somebody everybody wants him to be. You know what I mean? Like, he's not, I mean, yeah. You see in interviews when they're like, he's like, I don't, I don't even know who that guy, you know, and he used to, like, really be, say some crazy shit, but. He's like, I don't even know who that guy is. I don't even like that guy. You know what I mean? Like, he, he says that. So it's like, is, then you're like, are you even in the right mindset to be that guy? You're trying to be that guy everybody wants you to be. You know what I'm saying? So, again, this is a, this is one of those, it's a money fight. Yeah, just, I, that's what I felt with um, Floyd Mayweather. Everybody was like, no, man, McGregor could get him. I'm like, no, this is a money grab. Yeah. My friends are arguing with me. I'm going, no, it's a money grab for McGregor. It's a money grab for, uh, well, I don't know, Floyd Mayweather. How many more money grabs can you get after yeah. Pacquiao? But, no, I mean, I, I literally was like, I don't think he had a fucking shot at this. Oh, so and Chad, then at the end, you started seeing him bobbling his head back and forth through the ring like he was yeah. like, yeah, I knew it. I'm a friend. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Connor, and it's like, okay, are you you have to get him out of there. Are you going to be able to get Floyd Mayweather out of there? Well, 49 guys in front of you have it. So there's nothing that's going to lead me to believe that you're going to get him out of there. I'm rooting for you, Connor. I'm rooting for him. But, hey, that was a money grab. So, Shang, so Shang this weekend uh, in Miami or in Thailand, Fight Circus is going on. Uh, it's in Thailand. Uh, the card includes matchups. You know, fight overweight. Island, Fight Circus. What the it's, fuck? It's an overweight MMA bout between a super heavyweight and middleweight, two inexperienced brothers, against one experienced fighter, two best friends against an MMA fighter, two bare knuckle fights with headbutts, uh, one, one's a woman's fight, another a man's, a Muay Thai coach against a heavyweight boxer in a boxing match. Um, and also the main event's gonna be uh, former WBC heavyweight world champion Stephen Baines and 300 pound Australian Sam Cassidy. Are you gonna watch this? Fuck no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> It just sounds like a clusterfuck. It doesn't, come on, it doesn't sound like a clusterfuck. And then after that, we're going to have two dwarves do a grappling match, and their arms aren't really long enough to really grapple good, but they're going to grapple as best they can. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and butts and all that other goofy shit. Now, that's called pandemic boredom. Like, yeah, fuck it. Let's, uh, let's just have some, why don't my grandfather fight? My grandfather fucking fought the middleweight division, but guess what? My grandfather can't fight. That, well, one, he's dead, but still. <laughs> he was alive. Yeah, I used to fucking punch me all the time and shit. And I'm like, Pops, you old now, I'm gonna hit you in your Kolaski bag, you old bitch. And, it's, gonna uh, a, it's gonna be on a porn website called Cam Soda. It's oh god, that's even worse. Wait, that's is it funny. free? No. So uh, uh, Israel Adesanya said he's happy to follow John Jones to heavyweight. I think that's a bad idea. I think he's too small for heavyweight, Israel. Uh, John Jones 
cuts. I mean, he's at about 230 regular, two, plus 205. Israel is not a big guy. I think it's a bad idea. He's tall, but he's not thick. He doesn't have that density that it takes to, you know, be yeah. a heavyweight, I think. I think he's skilled, but he, I think that that weight, no, I think that's just silly. I think that uh, Jones and Stipe would be good. I yeah. still think Stipe would beat him. I think that Stipe would win. Uh, yeah, we, we talked about that. I mean, it'd be good. So this week, this Friday. I love these guys. I, I think a lot of these guys just they, they take their temp, they take the temperature on like how are people going to respond? You know, could this be a big fight? You know what I mean? Is it compelling? Is it going to sell pay per views? At the end of the day, these guys are fighters. They want to see how much money they can make. It's like John Jones going to heavyweight. There's a lot of compelling. But matches. Hey, how does it work for you, right? Does the UFC send you, hey, these three guys we want you to fight, and then you pick the one you want the most? No, not typically. Typically, they'll bring you like a specific opponent. And so this is who we're thinking about, or, you know, if you, the t- more so the timeline, if the timeline works out, Hey, are you, you know, six weeks, you know, next month, two weeks, whatever. So. Now, uh, did you know people that kept saying no to you? Were there people? Stop it, man. Let, me <laughs> my Let me finish my thought. All right, go on. But I mean, guys like Adesanya, he's one of the handful of guys who get pay-per-view points. You know what I mean? He can make a lot of money. So, okay. Of course it, it's, it's like, <laughs> It's like we know talking about he's, he'll fight a heavyweight for ten, you know, for a certain amount of money. It's like dude, these guys will they'll fight it. They're, they're fighters. They'll fight at any weight, like to make multi million dollars. Are you kidding me? Like, of course, one eighty five, two hundred five. The number don't matter. So they're taking their temperature on all these how the how people react. Oh man, they're gonna see Adesanya at heavyweight. We're, no, we're not. I mean, you know, they're gonna try to get the UFC to make some, you know, to make some stipulations to to try to make it happen if if there's a huge need for it, but. I don't buy it. It's media attention. Yeah. Now, Shane, when you got locked up, did you get any jail fights or no? That's hilarious. Why you <laughs> talk about what is, what is uh, uh, talk about uh, me being a good dad? What about oh, that? You you are a good dad. I just want to know, like, why don't you bring up the fact I cured some crippled kids? How about that? Okay, fine, fine. Right. I'm I, was, I, I know somebody must have stepped to you. Right, and you. Oh uh, well, hey, you know what? I don't like to talk about that. Really. Okay, all right, okay. Not right. a good time in my life. <laughs> hey, why don't we talk about the time of my divorce? Why don't we go on that on the MMA roasted? You motherfucker, you. <laughs> what was that like? Hey, man, remember that time you got kicked in the balls? Yeah, man. Fucking, uh, it was amazing. Uh, let's reminisce. Fuck, I'm not reminiscing about fucking being back against the wall. <laughs> It is the dumbest shit in the world. But let's talk about the legitimate ones. No, I, the only time that I was, like, when I've seen situations I was going, um, this is how old I am. Like, this is, you're so much younger. Oh, everybody's so much younger. With PKA, it was basically, you would know there were people that were monsters, and it didn't matter because they're like, you're next. And so for me, I was like, I don't want to fucking do this. Like, I don't know if other people feel that way. That's why I'm going to say for me. Because some people, I was like, this motherfucker's going to hurt me, and I'm never going to have kids. Like, there's certain people I think are scary. Like, yeah. right now, and Donald to me is scary to me. Like, I would never, I, if he bumped me and took my fucking salad in a line, I'd be like, man, enjoy that fucking salad. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, he's, he's, does, is it just me? Does he seem like no, no, he's been on this run where it's I, like, I've if he hits you, head. it's a wrap. No, I've seen like the heavyweights before, like, Guys like Josh Barnett, like big Roy Nelson, and you know they're they're big, but they they got some fat on them. And Gano must be like seven percent body fat because he's fucking huge, and there's no fat on him. It, it's like mm-hmm. that dude. It's it's like being with like a fucking Greek god. I mean, you're just like holy shit. He's like yeah. It's like when Thanos was fighting Hulk, and they were like when they went to stop him, they went no wait. Let him enjoy it. But, like, but, Jake, that's beat what him, I but, but Jake beat him in sparring. Who's right? And Ganu? Mm, no, it's... What happened when you guys sparred? You, you told us last time you beat him. We've never... No. <laughs> Adam, I've never sparred with France. And Ganu. I've, oh, okay. I've, All right. I've seen him train. No, we have <laughs> a little bit of a discrepancy there, Adam. Just about... Oh, no. You said Randy beat him. You said Randy beat him in sparring. Right, you said you were there. I said they, I said they trained together. That's what I said. Okay. Right. Come on, we gotta get some. <laughs> yeah, you know what? A lot of times I found that if you talk to people that have fought, you don't want to talk about the shit that happens during training. All right. You know, like that. Like even if somebody did beat you, if you roll with somebody and they beat you, you still don't want to. Yeah, we don't really want to talk. About I know, that. but he gets really uncomfortable, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you like? 
making him a – You are – what are you yes, doing? Like, yeah, I like when you're uncomfortable. I like pushing his buttons. It makes me laugh. That's, <laughs> that's fucking me. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, no, I, I've seen you. I've worked with you. I've been on the road with you. I've seen your I'm, act. I'm know. bored. I'm bored sometimes. I'm just like, you know what? Let's just fucking see hey, what happens. if you. Do how that. did that debate go last week? Oh. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, it was it was it was a it was a fuck show. That's what it was. It was it was like it's like I don't even want to talk anymore because Trump rubbed my body down with oils and made me feel better. And then he got off. He had to get off. I'm like, not that I'm making fun of him. I don't want him ever. Oh, no, dude, I still get texts from him to send to you about Black Lives Matter videos, and I'm like, I'm not gonna send it to him. Oh, he can, he can, he can send it directly to me, but I don't want to run into him either. I think that, <laughs> no, you know what, I think that the reason I get fighter, like, I think I did it, you know ever people that, you join Taekwondo and you join Jiu Jitsu because your dad thinks it's a good idea, Yeah. that type of shit. But you know that eventually this shit is not for you. Like, even when you start going in like tournaments, you go, I don't know if I want to be in an Epsom salt bath for fucking two nights. Right. I just, like, after a while, you start going, you know what? Jokes feel easier. Yeah, you know, of course. But, yeah, me. but that's why I give so much props to the guys that are out there swinging it for the fences. And even when I was watching the fights this past weekend, I was sitting there going, I still give them props, but fuck, that ego part of it, if I, if I Pike Chance ever kept going, I'm telling you, fuck all that ego shit. Get the win. Yeah, so the more wins you get, you then you can leverage your money. So Jake, um, Andrew, you were like, what were some of the weird texts you got after you won and after you lost? No, oh, oh, just really quick to, to add to what you're saying. Like we were talking about this last week. I know Wing Dog too. We we're like, DC had more ways to win, but we're talking about is he going to stick to the, the game plan? Is he can he can he stay with the strategy? Right. And not you know what I mean not alter from that. And sure enough, you know. Because it's like, dude, you're a t you're you're an Olympian. You're, you're probably arguably the best wrestler in the sport. You know, top three easily, easily mm -hmm. the best. But it's like, dude, take him down, beat him up. Like you can do the. You know, look at Chael Sonnen, Anderson Silva won four and a half rounds. He did it. You know, don't tell me you can't do that too. Well, at the same at the same time, Stipe is like a foot taller and was a college wrestler. Anderson Silva was a jiu jitsu guy versus. Yeah, no, uh, I, I understand. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, like a striker. Four and a half rounds, he was getting mopped. Let's be real. No, he I'm was. We're talking wrestling. about talking about whether or not it was easy enough to take him down. That's what I'm talking about. He took about Anderson Silva's jiu-jitsu, I mean, wrestling defense, which was great because he beat a lot of wrestlers versus Stipe's wrestling defense. We have never seen anyone take Stipe down and hold him down for a long time. But no one's really tried. I mean, eh, a couple, but I'm saying DC is arguably the best wrestler in the sport. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know. I, I, and I'm not saying it'd be easy. It certainly wouldn't be easy. The guy's, the guy's a champion for a reason. But, you know, I, I thought if he didn't stick to a strategy like that, it wasn't going to go his way. So some fights this week. Uh, we got Ryan Bader versus Vadim Nemkov. Uh, Ryan Bader is like, went to Bellator, went like nine and one. His last yeah. loss was to Anthony Johnson. Like he hit him so hard, he went on like a 12-fight winning streak. Like, that's <laughs> fucking how hard this guy hits. I mean, Bader, you talk about a guy who's looked better than ever. I don't know if, if it's mental. I, I remember the one – I think it was. The one thing on Bader, the knock on him was mental. But I was at the fight versus him and uh, Machida, right? Obviously, fighting Machida is a unique experience because you're fighting a, a, a karate guy who's moving backwards the whole time. And it's hard to fight a guy like that. Now, the crowd all started booing. Everybody in Sable Center, boo, boo. Now – a guy who was at a better mental place than Ryan Bader would be like, fuck this crowd. I don't care. Let him bring this fight to me. Instead, Bader's like, I don't want to hear booze. I'm going to shoot in, and boom, he gets knocked out, right? So that was the old Ryan Bader. This new Ryan Bader is just uh, on a fucking different, I mean, destroying Matt Mitrioni, knocking out Fedor, knocking out King Mo, uh, just running through everybody. This dude, Vadim Nemkov, though, is also a beast. He beats Phil Davis, beats Rafael Carvalho, I think in like two rounds, that, like, submits him. This is a good fight. And of course it's Bellator, so they keep it all secret uh, because they like to do VIP showings where you have to like know a code and, and talk to someone's grandma to fucking find out how to order it and stuff. But uh, this is a very under the radar fight. Who do we like in this fight? Jake Allenberger. 
It, it's a great fight. Uh, I think, you know, I, I'm going to go with Bader. I think he's the guy's been on fire. He's got a lot, a lot of momentum and like, even with his age, he keeps, he keeps getting better. So uh, that's a tall, that's a tall task. I think, uh, I don't think it's going to be a short fight, but I'm going to go with Bader. Shane? Yeah. I mean, I think because Bader, I, I hate, I'm going to say it, he, he's got the momentum, but I don't know, that motherfucker he's fighting, he wrestles dragons. Like, <laughs> no, that, no, I'm like, when I say that, no, he's a, like, he's like, no joke. Like, he's no joke, but. Uh. Can you say, by the way, I, Shang, you're one of my favorite comedians. All these people that are like, fuck Antifa Shang, fuck you guys. Shang's my guy. As long as he's gonna be on the podcast, I'm not. So. I'm not with. Why do they say I'm with Antifa? You just guys making shit up. I'm not <laughs> with Antifa. I think Black Lives Matter is fucking. I don't like the website and the ploy of what it is. But yeah, being black, I kind of go. Yeah, Black Lives should matter a little bit. Look, look, here, here's my opinion. saying that could matter. Black Lives matter. Obviously, please. That's like you said, like your daughter, little girl. If you have a little daughter and you say, little girls matter. And somebody says, oh, fuck you, bro. Don't say that. You'd be like, wait a minute. They do. Right, right, right. Yes. Right. Well, speaking of Black Lives Matter, uh, we have a really, wow. really. Is that, was that a segue? Did you just uh, do that? We have wow. a, a hilarious comedian. Um, and uh, he's like, his dude's hilarious. I, I watch his stuff. Uh, and he's really funny. Been on the, the Tonight Show. Is a writer um, for The Daily Show. Tour with Trevor Noah. Funny as hell. Josh Johnson, how are you, man? Good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. He no problem. Your, no he problem. gave all your credits. He didn't even say sex trafficking, which I think is bullshit. <laughs> sex <laughs> trafficking? Yeah, you should put that in there since you bring it up like kind of weird shit. Like, <laughs> the, I'm just oh, coming in, so I have no idea what's happening. But that <laughs> I've been here for the whole show, and I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, it's like, oh, hey, man, how was it when, uh, you know, what was that rape thing going for you? Like, oh, that's not what I said. I, I, I know. I'm fucking I said with you. you. I don't know. First of all, you went on stage. First of all, okay. Clear this up. Shang, I'll be yogurty. Shang, you went on stage, and I used to open for you. And you told the crowd, a lot of you guys are like, where you been? And you're like, I had to go away for a little bit, but I'm back. So you told the crowd that. I know, right? but I haven't done that bit so in now, a long time. So, so you said it. that. So that's why I said, if you got any fights, if you didn't sit, tell the whole crowd that every show, I wouldn't. You probably wouldn't ask me. Okay, I agree with you. you you're, you're right. So, what's up, okay. Josh? All right. Not, not much. I, I had no idea that there was a long fought battle going on. Uh, no, there's not. We're just, we're just idiots. No, we fuck with each other. I've, I've, I've been in cornfields doing shows with this man, so I'm good. Yes, of course. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, Josh, man, um, are you an MMA fan? Yeah, yeah, big one. Nice, because I, I, I watched some of your your comedy. And you said that you were a theater major. And oh, were, yeah. And you were terrible at sports. I'm, I'm terrible at sports, but I love watching other people do them. Oh, that's good. I, I guess you're leaving the show. Well, yeah, that was that, great. You Thank go. you, Josh, for coming to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. So, oh, um, he's back. He's back. So who are some of your favorite fighters? Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Izzy. I think Israel Adesanya is like a, a definite new wave. And it's like, uh, it's nice to see somebody that puts together both the like showmanship, but also the, the level of like strike acumen that he has is, is, is incredible. And I'm excited for his fight with Paula Costa. And then I, I can respect Henry Cejudo while still cringing at everything that he says. I think that he's He's a phenomenal fighter, and I think that the retirement is fake, and I kind of hope it is. But at the same time, I think, like, you know, if he did retire, it, he, he went out on top, which is nice. Very few people get to say that. So who do you think wins, by the way? Let's, uh, let's, let's go around the, around the, the horn here. Uh, Israel or Costa? I think Israel. I, I just – the way that I – see Costa and I'm not you know a fighter by any means I I, I swing for the fences like an idiot and and my jujitsu is terrible I'm, I'm a white belt and I get choked out every time but I will say that the way that I've seen Paulo Costa fight is very reckless and heavy-handed and he's he's kind of heavy on his feet he's not he, you know he's not nimble and he sort of telegraphs everything um I think even his fight with Romero, I kind of in my head gave it to Romero. I think that, you know, he he hits really hard and he's fought. I was there actually at MSG when he fought Johnny Hendricks and 
Uh, it was an incredible fight to watch, but you're also talking about a different Johnny Hendricks than Johnny Hendricks, the champ. So I think that some of his highlight reel and some of his accolades are a bit convenient for the time. I think he caught some people on their way out, and I think he's been able to beat some people who don't necessarily have that that top 10 breakthrough. Um, so I think Izzy's going to be a different scenario for him. Jake? Yeah, I would agree. I think – Israel's definitely the the more when it comes to fight IQ, hundred percent. I'm going to go with Izzy, but uh, you know, Paulo Costa is dangerous and and uh, he is he's a little bit wild, but he he does seem to be a, a bit flat footed. Um, and I, I, he certainly hasn't faced the competition that uh you know that Israel's faced. So I, I'm going to go with Israel by uh, maybe like fourth or fifth round stoppage. Wow. I think he gets, he gets him out of there though. Shane? Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I never liked Ricky Martin. Uh, <laughs> no, he reminds me of like if Ricky Martin ate another motherfucker. Like if, <laughs> like if Ricky Martin said, you know what? And they just ate it. Um, I just, I, I want him, I want him to lose, but I feel like he's just that forward motion, that movement, that aggression. He is heavy handed. I don't know if Izzy's ever been hit that hard like that from a dude with that kind of power, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to give it to uh, Ricky Martin. I, 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 Wean Dog? Am, am I the only one here that likes Paulo Costa? <laughs> I love this dude <laughs> so like, much, sure, dude. Pretty much. Costa going to win, too. I think he – I mean, I definitely agree with Jake uh, and Josh that Izzy has an amazing fight IQ, and I think that's going to be a huge advantage for Adesanya. But something about – the way Paula Costa just ran through Yoel Romero was just so impressive to me that I have to give him the slight edge. Cause I think Paula Costa does not give a fuck if you're a great kickboxer, if you're going to, if you're great at throwing body kicks, leg kicks, Paula Costa doesn't give a fuck. He eats leg kicks for breakfast. You know, he puts leg kicks in his fucking cereal. You know what I'm saying? So I think Paula Costa Most is going to put on a great kick. show and I think he might get the knockout win. So, so Josh, uh, yeah. years. what's it like touring uh, with Trevor Noah? Uh, I mean, the the bit that I've been able to do is absolutely amazing. You know, yeah. one of the big one of the big motivators for me wanting to not only get better but get get to a point where we live in a world where COVID isn't like in and behind and around every sentence is to resume some of those shows on that tour was absolutely incredible because it was the biggest crowds I'd ever performed for. And it was great to see that the things that I do at the cellar work on a massive scale for a bunch of people who don't know I'm coming. That's right. That's the best part. Dude, I watched um, your stand up and I watched your like your first tonight show set, which was good. Then I watched your set on Comedy Central, which blew me away. Oh, and thanks, man. I, I just I, I saw your your evolution a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Of, 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 the first one was good. You're like, I'm short, a lot of short jokes. I'm like, okay. But the second one, I was like, I, you're like, I feel like I'm not a black person. Like, I just, it was, it, I was like, this is the most, some of the most brilliant comedy I've seen in a long, long time. Not the first one was bad, it was good. But no, I was no, like, I oh, appreciate man. it. I know what you mean. Really been working on your why, didn't, why didn't you ask him about your own tour? What about the, the hookers and cocaine? What about that? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, you're on There's, tour, uh, Trevor Noah, big crowds, whores, cocaine. Tell us. Come on, man. Don't uh, you fuck yourself. You know what? You're being selfish. You've changed. There's, there's I nothing. The there's there's nothing. Oh, come on. There's got to be I hot mean, women. There's, there's got to be hot women at the show. Stop it. Yeah, in the crowd, but not like, I don't know. It's not this uh, rock star type of experience that I think people. No whores. Think you did not one whore. Okay. <laughs> nah. Yeah, you know what? Okay. I like your stand up, but you're, you're not being truthful. I mean, I, I, I hate it that I have to disappoint you. Like, like, honestly, I, I wish I had a story for you, but there's none. Uh, first, Jake, first you go for Izzy and now you say this. Uh, Jake, before you were, um, Jake, before you were, uh, uh, married and you know, when you went to Omaha and you fought in those, those cornfields, those women, was it all the farmers only women? They must've like, it was crazy, right? All right, thank you. That was Jake. Wow. <laughs> he just left. No, it probably just fell out. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Perfect timing, though. Right when you finish your question, right, he just dips. Ah, ah. Oh, well, there he is. Oh, no, no. Oh. We, actually, we have Kai Kamaka here. Uh, How you doing? Kai! 
Uh, he's oh, Kai's, wearing, Kai's wearing a mask during the interview. This is uh, this is awesome. This, uh, so, hey. well, he's in Target. Uh, Kai, how are no, you? Man? I, I'm actually. Oh, my friend is. He cuts hair out here, but he's in barber school, so I'm kind of just waiting around to get my hair cut. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, man. There's nothing like an interview while someone's getting a haircut with a mask on. So, uh, by the way, congrats on your your fight last week. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you, you look, did your thing, man. You really dude, did. That, that was. Was that, was that the happiest you've ever been after a fight? No, not I, I don't I don't I'm not really happy after my fights. I don't know. Maybe it, I'm just like yeah, I'm kind of more relieved to get the fight week and then, but I wasn't really like happy. It was like I kind of take it like um like with a Brett Metcalf mindset, like you know, like I expect to win, so I wasn't really happy. I think I like like the mindset might like I I just. Um, I like to win, but I hate to lose. So it wasn't really a big deal um, as far as, like, I think I was more happy for the bonus. Watching all, I was, <laughs> the bonus I was happy, thing. Yeah, I was happy watching all those fights and everybody telling me that, oh, that one wasn't that good. I think you're still in the running. That one wasn't that good. You're still in the running. So I think that was more, like, I, I had more happy moments watching the fights and wishing for boring, other boring fights. Josh, did you watch this fight? I I believe I it was the first I, fight pay per view first fight of the undercard the very oh first yeah fight. then I did that's wild it, I think the mask also threw me off he fought yeah. he fought Tony he fought Tony Kelly yeah um, uh, so so you're on a six fight winning streak um, but by the way Kai uh, your wrestling is insane uh, I had ever like are you the best wrestler ever from Hawaii <laughs> no not really I. I mean, there's guy, there's guy, there's been D1 guys that went. They, um, there's been D1 guys from Hawaii. I don't know if you guys know Travis Lee. He went to Cornell, um, I, and then I got some friends that went to like Iowa State and all. But um, there, I think that there's a little bit better wrestlers than me in Hawaii. Not uh, man, maybe not know, too man. much, not too much. Let me tell you, man. I, when I was watching the fight, I was like, first you kept, you kept coming. They were like, oh, you know. And he started slowing down, and I was like, and as soon as he started slowing down, he was kneeing the fuck out of him. I was like, yo, you got him with a couple great knees. I was like, yo, and I mean, you, I, would never, I wouldn't want to roll with you, motherfucker, because you, you're serious with your shit. You are, man. Seriously. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you were the state champ of Hawaii? Yeah, I, I was. Um, I was like a two-time finalist. I don't know, it might not be a big deal to like all these mainland guys, but I was a two-time finalist in Hawaii. And I lost to a guy that my fresh, uh, my so my junior year I lost to a guy that no my sophomore year is when I made it to the finals. Um, I lost to a guy that went to end up wrestling at Air Force and he was a three time state champ. Um, yeah, he wrestled at Air Force and then I, I won my senior year. My junior year I got hurt. But and and your, and your dad is a football coach and your brother played yeah. wide receiver for the at, yeah at UH yeah he played at U University of Hawaii. And your cousin's Ray Cooper the third. Yeah. So my um. My dad and his mom is brother's sister. Okay. So like Thanksgiving was just one big rumble? Um, not really. It's kinda of, it's kinda of weird because I mean we we, we, we kinda of, it's hard to have thanks big Thanksgiving. I mean like really well Thanksgiving is not a year of fighter. Like I was preparing for Bellator and he was preparing for PFL championships. So I mean it was the same. It's just like we weren't like picking out. Of course. Now Josh, do you have any athletes in your family? Uh no. No. I am the closest and I am not. So <laughs> <laughs> what 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 drives you to mixed martial arts? Um, I think. Um, I think because, oh, sorry. Is it? No, no. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Who you're uh, uh, both of you, Josh, you go first. And then Kai. Oh, okay. I think that I just didn't have the bandwidth and the interest in team sports to know all those stats and to know all of the stuff going on, like basketball, soccer, football wise. And, you know, getting wrapped up in both the story and the individual skills of one person was always fascinating because, you know, I think that fighting is the first and highest form of competition because it's just about imposing your will. So even when LeBron dunks on somebody, he's trying to do the same thing as like suplexing someone. Like, it's just that fighting is a more straightforward way with less rules and there's no ball in between the will and everything. You're like the most brilliant fucking guy I've, I've ever talked to. Uh, thanks. Oh, that's uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, uh, Kai, what, what got you into fighting? Um, I, I like, you know, like how like a puppy, like once he gets to open his eyes, like he can see the world. 
I think like my moment like that is like once I could see like the world, I was like at like, I don't know if you know like what Super Brawl was back in Hawaii. There was like a, yeah. like the pretty like pretty big organization. And, like that's like that's all I could remember that Rum on the Rock. Um, that was BJ Penn's organization. So like that that's like ever since I got out the womb, I can just remember going to those events. Like that was Friday Night Lights, you know. Like that was like the biggest thing for me. And um, yeah, from like five years old on, um, and it's been like a twenty-year journey. Like, like, like people say that you know they train all their life for like to get to the UFC, but I feel like I, I feel like I really did. It's not like I'm not just saying it like to say it. Um, so I, I've seen like UFC fighters like, like pretty frequently, um, and you know it's not like it's just now that I, I'm finally here. It's more of a relief. Well, okay, so here you are now. You're 17 years old. You have two kids and you're married. 17? Um, so, uh, no, no, Kai, how old are you? No, I'm 25. You're 25. Oh, my God. But you, but you got – why do Hawaiians get pregnant so quickly? Like, I heard, I feel like teen mom is, like, the norm over there. Like, there's – like, <laughs> what's going on? He ain't lying. I, I'm, oh, not lying. I'm not lying. What is – multiple times. Is there no Netflix out there or something? Like, why are – Hawaiians getting pregnant so soon. I have no, I have no idea. Um, uh, now, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Now Hawaiian so, women are off the charts, fine. Oh know? my god, they're off the charts. They're, it's like they're almost they were made in a beautiful lab or some shit. So do you get do you get do you get arrested if you don't have a kid by the age of twelve or something? Like, what? what? <laughs> I thought it was older. Fourteen. No, I, it just seems like did like, Hawaii. Right? Am I right? And you guys have huge families, like huge. Yeah, families. we we do we do. Like, are you an yep. outcast for only having two kids? No, we, I mean, I'm getting up there already. Like, I have one coming in October. So oh, okay, oh good, good, good. But my my cousin Ray, he has, he has like he's 27 and he has five already. <laughs> I'm I'm not lying. No, you guys no, it's true. No, I I went there and did a show. I I don't know, if you know who Booyah Tribe is? Booyah Tribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I've, I've seen that around. I've seen that the, the the brawl down there, and I went down to do shows and I stayed. And they just literally, a, a family came, they saw me, took me to their house, literally going through the, up, like almost up in the mountains, and they had at least 30 kids. <laughs> but we all hung out, and it was like for like two days and just fucking it's ate. Beautiful. They're the most, they're the most warmest, nicest people like, a in great the time. world, but they have, a, they love to fuck and not use condoms. Um, but <laughs> like, it is, it is what it is. Um, it is what it is. Now you moved to Vegas. Uh, was that a culture shock for you? No, um, I, I mean we fry, we we we're in Vegas pretty frequently, um, Vegas and California. So I not really, and I like I kind of um, it was I pretty much moved here until I got into the UFC. So now I'm going back home. Oh, yeah, I'm right. I'm going back home. <laughs> now, Josh, are you out of LA or New York? New York, yeah. So I live in Brooklyn. That's I saw I saw you at the cellar. That's when I first saw you. Oh really? Okay. Oh, I used to, I, I used to live there and do shows. I'm old. I'm an old comic, and uh, no, I mean, I, when I was doing shows there, and I would come back and forth. There was a couple castles, and okay, that was clever. Like you know, how you don't laugh anymore. You kind of watch people go. That was good. That was. That was good. Now, Josh, are there any Republican or conservative writers on the Daily Show? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a there's a handful of. I I think that the ideas are more diverse than people think they are. No, they're not. Stop. You don't think so? <laughs> <laughs> One, I'm just letting you know. They're fucking frightening. Uh, no, I, I think like a lot of comics are conservative, but they can write liberal, and they can write for both, you know, they can write for conservative, and, I, and I'm wondering if there's conservative people that just know how to write great jokes for liberal, and they work on The Daily Show. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that as long as you know how to write jokes, you know how to pivot, like, subjects and stuff, because the structure of the joke works the same. So even if you don't believe in the thing, you can write a joke that makes fun of someone who's either on your side or, you know, you don't necessarily have that many differing op opinions from. I think that it's, it's, if you're good at joke writing, it's easier to do than people think it is. I think if you get caught up in your feelings, then you can't, then it's impossible to like write a good joke that goes against what you believe. How do you, how do you sit and write? I wrote for a couple shows. Um, how do you sit there and write with a dude, and then afterwards he goes and puts some kids in cage? I mean, how, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, yeah, I 
like kids in cages. Hey, man, I got this funny bit about the wall. Yeah, I mean, I think that for for different people, there's going to be differing levels of uh, of intensity with it. I think that some people, no matter who you're talking to, just don't care about things. There, there are you guys people, all comedians? That's why. I, yeah, these are all comedians. Oh. I no, yeah, I I I, I um, apparently because of Adam, I'm a convict. Uh, I'm fucking with you, Adam. No, but no, uh, yeah, long time ago. Uh, but he's obviously, uh, Adam, you're kind of a comic slash, you can, you're a wrestler. You're a wrestler. Yeah, I wrestled in high school and college. Wrestled in high school, and I, and I competed back in the day with uh, PKA. It was called uh, PKA. Josh, how many um, jokes do you write that don't get on the show? How painful is that? Are you like, ugh. Mm, it's not really painful anymore. I think I'm just used to it now because when I wrote a Tonight Show, that was my first experience with writing a ton of jokes every day and only having one or two picked every night. And so it's like you you just get used to that. At, at a certain point, you don't treat them like your babies anymore. They're just work, you know. And not not to say you're not having fun, but you just you know that if you wrote eighty jokes in one day, that conceivably all eighty of those jokes can't be on the show. You know, so it, it you're gonna have to get used to it no matter what, starting real real quick. And I want to ask Kai a, a quick question, Kai. Okay, obviously you you felt like you were gonna be in the UFC. You already knew you were gonna be in the UFC. You just I, and from watching you fight, I just thought I, I know this sounds weird. Now that you said that, I just thought yeah, it's given. But man, the way you move forward, one your movement fucked me up. Your movement is like the way it's it's almost. It's almost like that's the boxers do the way you move them. I wish you would move out of target right now. Huh? <laughs> Go on. No, I'm saying so it, watching you fight, man, and watching, well, other than your ground, I just felt like on standard wise, man, it's looking like it's natural. Yeah, well. Uh... I, for one, I didn't actually, I, you know, when you're trying to get to the UFC, you don't ever think you're going to get to the UFC. But um, I, I mean, I knew I was good enough to be here, but I just didn't think it would happen, you know. And, um, but it was just so it's much more of a relief rather than like a shock because I expected to be here. But um, as far as like my boxing and my movement, um, yeah, I think like my style best is just boxing and wrestling. That, that's, that's the way I like to think about it, like punching and takedowns. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I try not to get too fancy on the on like on kicking. I just try to defend in kicks, and um, yeah, just boxing and takedowns. That's just how I, that's that's just the way I think about about fighting in general. Now you did you, you took the fight on four days notice. So how much weight did you lose? I was keeping my weight low, um, just just because I want like if this opportunity came, I wasn't gonna um like pass it up. But I only lost like like 10 pounds okay That's so bad. yeah okay. and, and i called july and then, 31st and then you okay. wrestled and you wrestled in college yeah i wrestled at a, a small naia school in nebraska midland university were you the only hawaiian there no there's another hawaiian that like brought us there um brought me there and then um like once i got there i started bringing like more like my brother played football there and he brought a bunch of guys there and I, I, I like a couple other wrestlers came there and like girl wrestlers too. So wow, so you that's cool. So you guys like took Hawaii and brought it to Nebraska. Pretty much, and then like there are other schools in like Creighton. I don't know if you uh, you guys heard of Creighton. They had a lot of Hawaiians there, so we'd go there um, just to like hang out and stuff. And now you're at Extreme Couture. No, um, no, I was training at the like until I got the call. I was training at, like Venom Fight Camp because I didn't want to go to places and like possibly get hurt. So I was trying to stay like we're like in a smaller setting, you know, because I didn't because I did I didn't want to get dinged up and then I get the call and then like you know I'm going into going there with like little more injuries than I was already trying to recover from in the last fight. So Jake, you're back. We thought I asked you a question, you just left. What's up, brother? No, technical difficulties, man. It's weird. Oh yeah, of course, of course. So we're here. We got Josh Johnson, who's like a uh, hilarious comic, used to be in the Roots, uh, and then we have we have we have Kai Kamaka. Uh, he, he's a Hawaiian, but he wrestled in uh, Nebraska, which is where you're from, Jake Allenberger. Oh, yeah? That's awesome. Thank I actually you. trained I trained with Jake a few times. I trained with his brother, Joel, at um, Premier Combat Center. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's awesome. Did you beat him? <laughs> no, I, I, 
I did it. I think he was getting ready for a fight. I don't, well, one of his fights that he was just in Nebraska for a bit before he went back. Oh, you hear that? Adam Jay? likes to try to start shit. So <laughs> <laughs> you do, Adam. Um, no, I, what I was gonna. I, the other thing I just want to ask before it does, I, it's it's cool for me to get this opportunity. What is it? I'm gonna ask both of you, Jake and Kai. When I ask, if like like I said, when I watched you fight and I watched you guys fight, there's a naturalness about like the way some people move forward and there's a staggeredness and some people move forward, they kind of plod and you kind of just float into it. Do you, you like, and you got hurt, you got hurt. You definitely got cut a couple of times when you're cut and you hurt. What is that one last thing you just go, you know what? You go back to the training or is it just fucking hard? Because a lot of times some people go back to what I learned in, the, in training in the, in the plan and other people go back to like, fuck it. It's time to bite down and just beat the shit out of this guy. Like, does that make sense? Which one do you do? Yeah, it, it, it's hard. I mean, one of the things is, is you got to be ready for audibles, and and you don't plan to get you know you don't plan to get cut or see stars or, or have these these things happen to you, but they do. You know, you forget it. You know, you know, you the mentality where you you just got to be prepared for anything. But um, you know, that's one of those things. Is is emo? I mean, emotionally. You, you got to stay disciplined. You got to stay focused because it's easy to just say, fuck it. And let's start, you know, and just go. That's, that's really not, that's easy it, 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 to stay like strategic and, and try to stay kind of homeostasis in a way, you know, that's tough. It's hard to do, especially when you get cut or you get hurt. But uh, man, it's, 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 it's one of those things. You, you got to try to stay, have some sort of a level head with strategy. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I think, I mean, being honest, I try. I mean, yeah, you, you gotta stay in homeostasis as much as possible. But like for me, I think in this fight, once like once like I knew I was bleeding, that's when I like okay, I gotta okay, I gotta just bite down because you know you you know I for me I thought like blood blood just you know that's that's score you know that that um that's points for the other guy. So um I, I was just thinking like shoot, I gotta um I gotta just bite down and get going and then um. That's how, that's the, that's the, yeah, that's the switch that I had to make. I mean, if there was no blood, like, I'm not bleeding, then he hits me. It's kind of like, okay, you got me, but, you know, there's nothing there. So, you can kind of play it off. But once there's blood, it's like, you know, it, it kind of shows the, it could probably sway in the judge's way that, um, you know, a little bit more damage that way. So, Josh, you have any questions for Jake or Kai? Um, yeah, I guess I, okay. Mm. How do you... <laughs> How do you increase your level of like power when you strike? I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm starting to, and this is on like a super minute level. This is like barely existent, but I'm starting to try to get into a little bit of Muay Thai and a little bit of boxing on top of the Jiu Jitsu. And I'm bad at all of it. Like, I don't like, I think there might be something wrong with my eyes. I can't, I, I can't even describe what happens because sometimes I start swinging and I'm not even close. Um, if you've ever watched the wonder years, it's like when Kevin tried to stand up to that bully and, and got like a full on stance, started with the power from the feet, used it to switch up in the hips and then brought that fist right into that bully's shoulder. And both him and the bully were like, what'd you just do? That's kind of how I fight. But I'm wondering how do you how do you gain power as you as you strike and as you get better at it? Well, Jake, you've knocked out uh, uh, Jake Shields. Uh, you've knocked out uh, Nate Marquardt. You knocked out Pele. Those are three tough guys. Any any really tough guys? You want to answer these? Want to answer this question? Jake knocked I out. I mean, a it, you know, for me. Oh. Yeah. No, Jake. No. It's tough. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. We can hear you. Um, it, you know, it, it's tough. I mean, it's one of those things where, obviously, your your power, you know, is gets generated. So, it's really, uh, and even like I don't know, I can't look at myself like where naturally I could hit hard, but it kind of has evolved it more of like placement and timing. And I'm mean, you look like a guy like Israel. It's like that guy hits and he can move really well and he doesn't get hit. I mean, but I mean, to just, to basically increase like your punching power, it's, I mean, even like you look at boxing, it's a lot of like, 
getting just repetitions, hitting the heavy bag, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's. I mean, that's that's one of those things. It's kind of what what the you know what the goal at the end of the day is. So is I, I think speed trumps power. You know what I mean? It really does. Isn't it with your hips too? The way you put your hips into it. Say it again. Don't, 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 don't your hips help the way you put your hips into a punch? No, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, you're, I mean, the hip, to, the hip turn, hip movement, I mean, that's, that's a lot of where the power comes from. So being able to, you know, there was, there was a drill that Boss Rudin used to do that I really, um, that I really liked. And it was really just a, it was almost like you cross your arms. You're just, you're just turning your shoulders, but you're using your hips. And you're just, and it's really, it's really hard to do. You start, you know, longer and, um, and more repetitions, but uh, that that was a good drill for just hip turns. Kai, um, yeah, I think I can answer this from a different perspective too, because I I feel like I naturally don't have that you know that knockout power. So I mean, this is something that my coaches are working with me is yeah, just I mean the heavy bag, um, and um, yeah, I mean everything else like you know the weight training, but then you also got to incorporate it with with the type of lifts that you do. Um, yeah, lots, lots of turning the hips and, um, yeah, just sitting down on the heavy bag and, like, um, um, yeah, um, you know, just hitting the bag super hard. I mean, you got to – it's kind of it's kinda hard to – I mean, you got you gotta, you kind of have to have some of it, but, I mean, it's something that you, you can definitely work on as well. Josh, that was a great question. Any more questions? And you want to be our new host? Uh, <laughs> no, I was, I was gonna say, I was gonna tell you, Josh. A lot of times, uh, like I was being taught, it's how you pivot. It's how you pivot mm -hmm. your foot. It's pivoting your foot forward. So when you you throw, it's your pivot and a snap on the end of your pivot. So it is your hip, but you still got to pivot your feet where you're pivoting it when you're following through. And he used to tell me, um, uh, Frank Friedman was one of the people. He said, you have to punch through. Like if the person's head's here, you gotta act like you're punching the head is behind them. So you gotta mm -hmm. start trying to punch through. And I found that, that that was one, but then I still, you know, I still still would get my ass kicked. But I mean, uh, but I but I, when I did land, it, I could tell it was from what he showed me. Like, oh punch yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. I, totally from him. But he I, I feel like I'm gonna be able to put all the pieces together when I get glasses. <laughs> that'll that'll actually be because because i i swear it's like i'm not even close yeah i mean it's like it's just like way oh, too close oh, or like it, way too it, far away it for you though it's it's not even here's the thing i feel i feel like i can see but i can tell from the way i live my life that i can't um All right like a lot of, uh, the girls you bring home are they like you think they're pens and then you see a picture I'll, I'll and give you like a full example. I'll give okay. you a full example. I was walking down the street, just going for like a daily walk. And then um, this little dog, uh, you know, ran across the street and, and started like licking my shoes. So I picked him up. And then this lady comes up behind me and she's like, hey, can you put my cat down? And I was like, what? And then, and then the dog meowed. And I was like, oh, I can't see. Like, like I- yeah, like, that's, That would be part of it. Like I have- well, first Shitty of all, why eyes. why does a lady have a cat out walking a cat? I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of this is fucking yeah, that's, she, that's but, way weirder, right? <laughs> well, listen, but no, I, when, no, when you say, and I was going to say, Jake, the same since we are here, um, mitts, just fucking, that, I mean, that's, that gets you sharp, especially with somebody telling you left, right, and they, I think that, so it's not always just your sight. It is doing that over and over and over again. I think it's a repetition of it. True. Of course, of course. So Kai, yeah. who do you want to fight next? Shoot. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to, I mean, I know everybody's going to be tough. Um, and I, I just kind of want to let the next fight play out. Maybe next two play out. Then I kind of want to start, you know, jotting down some names. But uh, right now it's just bring me my next UFC fight. <laughs> Wow! Wow! That's that's, that's that makes some big headlines right there. Uh, come on, dude, give us a give us. Come, we gotta. Oh, no, uh, you're always starting shit. What about what about uh 145, right? Um, yeah, 145. What about who's uh what about O'Malley? He's oh. 35. Oh, he's 35. Damn. Uh, who's 45? What about uh what about Max Holloway? 
That's just my that's my buddy. Maybe like that guy that I mean he just lost, but like guy this guy Peter Barrett. I think that'll be a good one. Yeah, hear that, Peter Barrett? You're fucking going down, Hawaiian style. He's gonna put a, he's gonna put a yeah. he's gonna put an apple in your mouth when he knocks you out. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about fighting uh, Andre Feely? Ooh. What about yeah, that'd be a good one too. That'd be a good one. Oh wow, that was a, that's a those are some fighting words right there. You hear that, Philly? <laughs> Fucking. That would be a good one. <laughs> well, oh, you can see Jake. But all of the people who have kids understand exactly what Jake's doing. So Jake's driving his kids. This no, guy's I, getting, I, this yeah, guy's getting a haircut. Yeah. Our other guy can't see. And, and then Shang wants to talk about the good old days back in the 1920 when he fought guys in PKA. Okay, it wasn't yeah, the 1920. It was the 1930. Settle down. This is quite the podcast. We have a blind guy. <laughs> A guy, a, haircut, a, fucking, a, guy with a, a guy with a minivan and fucking and cops over here. Fucking one minute we're talking about Stipe in DC, the next minute Adam's talking about Antifa. Yeah, it's just, hey, this is, you know, like, how do you make that leap? Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, listen, this has been a great podcast. Josh, any more questions for these guys? Um, yeah, okay, right. so. When you, okay, this is, this is a tough one for me. When you've been hit, right? So you've already been hit in the head. How, how do you gather yourself to not just uh, leave? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I, I feel like, because here's the thing. I'm not a shit talker. So all the fights I've been in really have just been like, it, it was, we we're at an impasse. You know what I mean? The fight's about yeah. to happen. But mid-fight, They'll hit you with a good one, and you're like, I don't know if I care enough about this anymore to keep fighting. Jake, how do you not leave during the fights? When you get yeah. There? I mean, listen, like when Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until you get hit in the mouth, that's so true because, like, you're going to get hit. And you know, kind of like we were saying, you got to prepare for audible. At the end of the day, like, when you get hit, and you, whatever, you see stars, you get dazed, it's going to come down to how bad you want to be in there. You know, Josh, it's, it's you gotta, easy to yeah. just kind of turn around. But. I'll answer the question for the guy. I mean, uh, this guy, Jake Ellenberger, he grew up on a farm. He joined the wrestling team in college without ever wrestling before. Never wrestled a day. Just walked onto the college wrestling team, which is fucking insane. Then he did bare knuckle boxing at Pat Milicic's gym with Tim Sylvia uh, with, the, with his buddies back in Iowa. And he, and he joined the Marines. Uh, and he's got three kids, and he's not married. Okay, so, so it's just that's the kind of person. All right, this is this guy, wow. Kai, this guy Kai Kamaka. Uh, his father was a fighter. His grandfather was a fighter. His cousin's a fighter. His brother's uh, a wide receiver. Like he had no choice. Okay, this, this, this is it was like a fight camp. It was like toddler fight camp back in Hawaii. Right. He went to Nebraska to leave the family, and everybody followed him from, to, 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 to kick his ass. It's a different type of person, okay? <laughs> Josh, you're, you're a nice kid. You're, you're smart, okay? Somebody hits you, you're like, I'm out of here. These guys, they're, they're, they're born into it. It's a different, there's some shit missing, you know? Am I right, Jake, Kai? I think you have to be like, I mean, nobody likes getting hit first. But you kind of have to be used to getting getting hit. You know, you have to at least be getting hit at least a decently um, hard hard shots at least just to know that this is what you want to do. I mean, yeah, you're gonna get live hit hard a little bit in practice, but at least you're a little bit more prepared for it. And then, yeah, there's times when you get hit. I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily like I want to get out of there, but like like oh shoot, I better do something. You know what I mean? I better I better get my wits back together and I I better get moving or else more 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 shots are coming, but I don't necessarily feel like that because I'm kind of already used to it. Um, if somebody hits me, I want to hit them back. So, I mean, yeah. the kind of person that gets a haircut in Target, okay, during a pandemic is the kind of person that, like, he's going to Target to get a haircut. <laughs> like, who the, who, the should, fuck, <laughs> who the fuck goes to Target to get a haircut? Uh, like, no, I it's my, my, have- no, my buddy's in, bar- he's in um, barber school, so I had to meet him. He, he moved from Hawaii. So, oh. It's even yeah. worse. It's, it's not even a real fucking haircut. <laughs> he's, he's trusting his friend to give him a, t- a haircut in Target, who's in barber school. Uh, like, uh, you, like what, are you guys in aisle four? Like, are you guys, is that even legal? Like, people just walking around you trying to buy shit? Like, what's... 
No, no it's, it's not it, Target. It looks like it's not Target. Right. It's, oh, it's not Target. Uh, I thought it was it, Target. But it looks like because we saw the pictures in the back, I thought, oh wow, man, I need to pick up some pots. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. No, I think that why, one, I, I wanted to say, Jake, it's 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 very cool to even talk to you, man. I I. I I've always appreciated your fights. And Kai, I think you got a whole bunch of good shit in front of you, man. If you got you keep that Thank natural you. movement. Especially, man, I was like, I was sitting here with I was sitting there watching it and I was like, yo, he like you you move more like a like I think a lot of boxers move. It's not yeah. it's not MMA boxing. It's almost like moving. And I think that that's why I, when you were closing the distance on that guy, I was like, yo, Tony, you in trouble, bro. Like that's that guy had a hard head. Tony was hard head, man. He no, he has a hard head, 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 but he was still getting—he was getting—he was getting pieced up. Dude, that's the haircut you're going with? Are you kidding me, dude? He needs to go back to school. Holy shit! What is he doing to you, bro? Like a, like a D minus, like at least. He hasn't even started yet, Adam. Dude, wow! All right, all right. That's, <laughs> you go. All right. That's Adam, what I'm I'll, give, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you the the cut, and you. It'll work. I promise. You look, you look like a, a Hawaiian lesbian right now. <laughs> and, and I wanted to say, uh, J okay, Jake's uh, the sounds off. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jake? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I just want to say, man, uh, the thing about me doing this, even Adam being kind enough to let me on the show, is that I get to talk to people like you, man, uh, a fan, and I'm just, yo, man, you did, you did your thing. You, you yes. always been like, oh, I just, to me, it's like, you're hardcore with it. And he talked about your three knockouts. I was like, those weren't knockouts. Those were <laughs> demolishings. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was, those were rough. And those were, they weren't no soft motherfuckers. They were serious. Like Jake Shields. I mean, Jake like, Shields, no joke. Nate, Nate Marquardt. And by the way, Josh, when you get glasses, make sure you give a pair to uh, it, this guy's this guy's barber. <laughs> uh, because fucking, I, I think we're not the only guy who's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you. What I was saying, you, know, you fought some serious motherfuckers and and and, and nap them. You just nap them. And, uh, I just think we're better. Even supercuts is like, what the fuck's going on right now? All right, listen, people. Uh, we got to end the show. Shit, man. Uh, Thank you. Hi, it was great talking to you, Kyboy. I appreciate that, man. I look Keep forward. Uh, uh, even though you won the fight, you're losing the haircut. Uh, Josh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Shang, you're the best. <laughs> it looks good, Kai. It looks good. What's that guy's name behind you? That, that's your friend? All right. Thanks, man. You guys are great. Uh, take care and have All a great right. week.